What makes the difference in the quality of people's lives? What makes some people leaders and other people followers? What makes most people talk about a dream and never follow through, and other people just a small percentage kick ass, take names, you can throw any obstacle at them, they find a way to break through. What's the difference? So it made me obsessed to want to know why people's lives turn out so differently. And my first answer, growing up poor with no great role models, was, well, some people are just lucky. They grew up in a family where everybody loves each other and they stay together. You know, some people are lucky. They grew up in a family and everybody's educated and so they work hard to educate their kids. Or some people are lucky. They grew up in a family with lots of money so they have resources to travel and learn and expand and do whatever they want. And as much as I wanted to believe that story, that some people are just lucky that they had a better family, when you pay attention and you're even slightly honest with yourself, that story doesn't hold up, does it? Because when you look around, what happens to people that were truly given everything and they don't have to work for it? What happens to the person who's born and they got total love and support from their family? They have total financial abundance. They don't have to worry about it whatsoever. They got all the great education. What happens to the majority of those? Not all, but the majority of those people don't build any muscle. They're not hungry because everything was given to them. So they don't have any hunger that could give them drive. Which if you ask me, Tony, what's the single most important key to success above anything else? It's not talent. It's not skill. It's hunger. If you get enough hunger going in you for an answer, you'll find the answer. If you get a hunger enough inside of you that says, I gotta take things to a next level, I gotta achieve, I gotta make a difference, I gotta expand, you will find the answer. People's intelligence will expand if they got enough hunger. But if you got everything and you're not hungry, you're not gonna have much. And then you find these people that life seems to have stepped on. You know the kind of people I'm talking about? Life has kicked them in the face. They've experienced tremendous injustice. Nothing has been fair to them. They've been abused mentally, emotionally, sexually, spiritually, whatever. And very often, those are the very people that most of us are inspired by who achieve levels that most people never dream about and who touch society. So how many came here for some breakthroughs? A breakthrough means a new quality of life. So let me give you three keys to a breakthrough. Any one of these three can give you a breakthrough, but if you do all three of these, you're gonna have an extraordinary breakthrough. So let's start with something so simplistic that none of us would be emotionally attached to it and we all know it's true. And that's, let's take a symbol in society. Literally 60% of Americans are overweight. Now I wanna ask you a question. Is that because the strategies required to losing weight are so complex that it's just completely overwhelming? No. However, if you have the wrong strategy, you're guaranteed failure, even if you're motivated and driven and excited. Is that fair to say? So if you have the wrong strategy, it's not gonna work. So let me give you three things in reverse order of importance, okay? Reverse order, least important first. If you wanna break through, one of the things that give you breakthrough is a strategy. A new strategy could change everything. Does that make sense? A new way to do something. If you come up with the right strategy, it could save you a decade. It could save you five years. What is a strategy? It's a specific way to do something that if you do it that way, you get the result every time. Let's think about a strategy like a recipe. If you know someone's recipe and they took 25 years to figure out how to make the perfect chocolate cake and you're not a baker, but you got their strategy, you got their recipe, how often can you get the same quality of chocolate cake if you follow their recipe, if you follow their strategy? How often will it work? How many times? Every single time. That's the beauty of a strategy. You can give someone the perfect strategy and they can still not do it. They can even know it's the right strategy and still not fall through. That's why the problem in our society is not a lack of strategies. So is it a strategy problem, do you think? No. So don't get me wrong, I believe strategy is invaluable, but strategy without the next two is basically worthless in my experience. You know what to do, but you don't do what you know. But the right strategy versus the wrong strategy is critical. I want you to make a note of this, really important. You have to do the right thing at the right time. I'll give you an example of my country. Buying a house, right thing to do. In my country, 2007, wrong time. If you bought a house in the United States in 2007, Right now, you're upside down anywhere from 30 to 70%. 70. In places like Las Vegas, they're down 70%. I have a friend that had a $10 million home, just sold for 3 million bucks. That's why, my friends, I'm a student of seasons. That's why you have to understand and become so incredibly bright and aware as to what's really going on. So when someone tells you the strategy, you go, is that really right now? Because they'll show you a strategy that worked. The question is, is it working now? You want someone who's done it and is doing it. People go to psychiatrists all the time that are taking antidepressants for their depression and they wonder why they don't get better. I mean, we're weird this way. I'm telling you, if you're gonna get a strategy, you better get somebody who's doing it. Someone's getting results. Now, 
Strategy isn't critically important. Even though I beat up on it, is it still a huge advantage with the right strategy, yes or no? So what's the second thing? The second element, though, that affects whether you're going to use the strategy or not is the story you tell yourself. Does that make sense? Because if your story is, I'm big boned, or I've tried what? Everything. If you tried everything, you'd have the answer, right? But when people say, I tried everything, what does that do? It makes your brain go, see, I've tried everything. There's no reason to try anymore. It's not my fault. I'm just big boned. I just have low metabolism, right? It's just, uh, I've always been this way. And by the way, people's stories are often true, but they're not effective. It may be true that you have low metabolism. It may be true that you're big boned, but that's not why you're fat. It's because you're doing nothing to change your metabolism. Make sense? Or I, I don't have a relationship with a great man or great woman because all the good ones are gone. Isn't that a common story people tell themselves? And what does the story do? It kills your hunger, it kills your drive, it gives you a reason not to face the discomfort. We've all lived in a society that has trained us since we're this tall now. Most of you, by the time you're 21, saw two million commercials and had to instantly get out of pain. Instantly out of pain. You know what the problem with getting out of pain is? It takes away the purpose of drive. How many of you know somebody who takes antidepressants right now and they're still depressed? That's because they have the same story. Even though they change their biochemistry, the same story brings them to that lousy place. If your story is, I don't have the resources, that story is gonna kill your future. If your story is, I can get any resource I want, if I find a way to add enough what? Value to other people's lives, then you can get the resources. How many of you in this room ski or snowboard? In skiing or snowboarding, if you take up the sport and you get on a really vicious hill, there's edges where if you don't stop, you go to the edge and you'll die. And what happens is when you're brand new and you're starting to skid out of control, most people slam themselves on the ground and try to hang on to the hill for dear life. And those are the people that will never master skiing or snowboarding because they let their fear of the edge push them down. The person that goes, I'm gonna dig in. I'm gonna work even harder. I'm gonna carve. It's scary as hell, but I'm gonna stay with it. They learn to carve. Those are the people that have skiing or snowboarding be something you love for the rest of their life. Your story is everything, my friends. And by the way, I'm not lecturing you. I'm sharing with you because I've learned by my own stupidity. That's the only reason I can share this. But you change that story, you'll change your life. Give up the story that limits you. It may even be true. You may have ADD. You may have been abused as a child. It may be true. But that story is not why you don't have great relationships or a great business now. You don't have great relationships or a great business now because you're so afraid of trying and failing, you keep telling that story instead of taking action. Third key, the most important key, and that is you need the right state, or Australians call state. Then what you have to understand is your state determines how you think and feel, right? How many of you in this room can remember a time when you got really angry at somebody. Do you ever notice when you're really angry at somebody, suddenly you remember everything they've ever done? Because when you go in that angry state, it makes you take the parts of your brain that relate to a story that supports that state. See, in the beginning of a relationship, when you love somebody, what will you do for them when you love somebody? What will you do? Anything. If they say, would you take out the trash? You go, take out the trash. But after seven weeks, seven months, or seven years, or 70 years, somewhere in that range, Something clicks different in you and they go, could you take out the trash? And you go, what do I look like, your janitor? And they go, I don't know what it is. We used to have so much passion, where did it go? I'll give you a clue, write this down. If you do what you did in the beginning of the relationship, in the end of the relationship, there won't be an end. How long have you two been together? A year, 20 years from now, there'll be no worries for you two. It's so simple. That's the difference in state, isn't it? Because when you go in a different state, you come up with a different story about your partner and then you use different strategies that aren't very good. If you're in a great state, great story, great strategies, you tend to maximize. Is this helpful? So tell me which one of the three here do you think is the one that can screw things up the fastest and can mess things up the most? Which one of these three, tell me. Story is the one that will sustain the problem. The one that can change everything the fastest is the state. The strategy is useful, don't get me wrong. I live for them. I mean, I, I can tell you some strategies in business. I've, I've taken companies, I, I buy them for next to nothing and turn them around, make millions of dollars, just using a couple of little strategies, simple business strategies, where if you don't know the strategy, ignorance is not bliss, ignorance is poverty, ignorance is pain. And the way I got those strategies is I'm willing to fly anywhere, do anything, spend any amount of money, because I knew the value of the strategy. But all that still would have been worthless if I didn't apply it. What got me to apply it was the right story in the right state. If you want to change your story, first thing you're going to do is change your state.